Blessed and highly favored, anointed and appointed and ready to battle. Good evening, soldiers of the Most High. Welcome to Tuesday night training session. Thank God we're not religious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, yes. Worship. You know, there isn't anything greater than God's presence. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing can compare to his presence. Nothing. Amen. No money, no nothing can compare to his presence. You can't buy his presence. They've tried. Amen. The price is worship. Amen. Amen. That is the price. To connect with his presence is worship. Why? Because as you're worshiping him, you're removing your presence and exchanging it for his. Then there's a connection. Then you change. Everything is different. You see differently, hear differently. Your heart is different. Then you begin to get a little drunk. And you have joy. Because if you're miserable, stay home. Don't tell anybody you're a Christian. Amen. Amen. Stay home in your closet till you get filled with the Holy Ghost. Other than that, religion, God never brought religion. He brought freedom. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Go to 1 John chapter 4. Thank you, Master. Man, we are in a time that's crazy, isn't it? I love it. <laughs> We're watching biblical portions of prophetic words being unfolded. It's awesome. <laughs> in 1 John chapter 4, and in verse 1, Glory. Is everybody there? Let's read it together. Because what you speak is what you eat. What you eat is what you become. <laughs> Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. And by this we know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come into the flesh is of God, and every spirit that does not confess that Jesus, is, Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of who? We are of God, and he who knows God hears us. He who does not know God does not hear us, and by this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Again, without the presence of the Holy Spirit, it is easy to be misinterpreted. In fact, you can't even interpret the word correctly. It'll be nothing but a book. So what does the Holy Spirit do? He brings me a new discernment. Because without discernment now, and right now there's the most time where we're going to really need discernment of what's going on. Because there's so many false doctrines, there's so many false prophets, there's so many false teachings, there's so much religious garbage out there, it's incredible. Remember, the first thing Jesus always wanted was us to come into his presence. Because <laughs> he wants relationship. It's not what you can do for Jesus. I hear that all the time from a religious how many souls we've saved? How many this, that? Forget it. How about where's your walk with the Lord? Does everybody get that? Everything's about money. Hello? And it's not about money. It's about God. It's about God's presence. Listen, if you walk in the presence of God, people are going to come to you. You don't have to go knock on no doors. No matter where you go, the presence of God is with you. And it's going to begin to minister to someone. He's going to begin to convict. You can stand next to someone, and the next thing they're, they're crying, and they don't even know why. Or they're running, and they don't know why. Because the demon's in them. <laughs> it's too many people don't understand that Christians can have demons. 
Hallelujah. That's why they, everyone needs to go through deliverance. That's why the Lord said here, and remember, the Bible, if you look at all of John's, uh, Paul's writings, what is it to? It's to the church. It's to believers. This Bible is for believers. Unbelievers don't, can't interpret it, even though some believers can't interpret it either because they don't have the Holy Spirit. And they become religious. But he says something powerful. Test the spirits. You can't test the spirits without discernment. It's impossible. Testing spirits. What kind of spirits? Well, the word says something powerful. You'll know them by their what? Fruits. Fruits. Now, in other words, we're going to check the fruits of individuals. We're not judging anyone. Amen? We're fruit inspectors. But you want to also know the discerning the spirits of what demon is trying to hinder. What's influencing? You know, demons are spirits that have souls. They have a mind. They have a will. They have desire. Demons are spirits with a soul. Why? Because what is the soul? It's a mind, will, emotions. Amen? So never don't think that a demon doesn't have a soul. It's a disembodied spirit. That's why it's looking for a body. Amen? So you and I must discern by the spirit of the living God through the Holy Spirit of what that spirit's intention is. So we're able to see through the physical into the spiritual, but you can't do that without the Holy Spirit. Is everybody okay? Philippians chapter 1. Spiritual protocol. Hallelujah. God is good. <laughs> Spiritual protocol. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 9. No protocol is associated with a system of governing rules. It's a protocol. It's a system of governing rules. In the military, there's protocol. There's things that we must do. There's a, a divine order. Amen? And there's something that you and I have got to do every single day that's called spiritual protocol. In Philippians chapter 1 and verse 9, is everybody there? Let's read it. And this I pray that your love may what? Abound still more and more in knowledge and what? All discernment. That you may approve the things that are what? Excellent. In other words, how are you going to prove something if you can't discern? You can't. That you may be what? Sincere and without offense to the day of what? Christ, being filled with the fruits of what? Righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ to the glory and promise of God. Wow. Okay, again. He says, I want you to abound more and more in the knowledge and in discernment so that you can prove the, approve the things that are excellent. Those things that are excellent are those things that God approves of. Does somebody get that? So we don't want to approve something that the devil approves of. We want to approve of something that God approves of. And you're going to know because it's going to have the fruits of righteousness. But living out of the soul, people discern only by feelings and familiar spirits. Feelings and familiar spirits. They make all of their decisions and how they feel instead of aligning themselves with the word of God that says what is truth. Amen. But those living out of the spirit can discern out of the spirit. They have a witness within themselves and they align themselves with the word of God so that we are not moved. And Proverbs chapter 2, spiritual protocol.
Protocol means a system of governing rules. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 2. Oh, glory. Proverbs 2, verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you, so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. <laughs> so then you can what? Incline your, uh, apply, apply your heart to understanding. Yes, if you do what? Cry out. Cry out for discernment. And lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver and search for her as hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord. And the fear of the Lord is reverence, honor, and respect. See, many people have no idea what the fear of the Lord is. And you can't get the fear of the Lord without being connected to his presence. It's impossible. Because his presence brings his fear. And it's not a tormenting fear. It's an honor and a respect and a reverence. It's all, that's what's holy about him. Then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth, come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the paths of the just justice and preserves the way of his saints then you will understand righteousness and justice and equity and every good thing again he says have an ear to wisdom apply your heart to understanding cry out for discernment the result is the fear of the lord because his presence then you'll increase the knowledge of god who is your creator you'll begin to learn more of his character there are things that you won't ask because you know it shouldn't be approved. Because <laughs> you'll know. And again, you'll have more understanding of righteousness and justice. In Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. And verse 31. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Therefore what? Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry. Be happy. <laughs> Therefore don't worry saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? What shall we do? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things, but... Seek first the kingdom of God. That's protocol. And his righteousness. And then all things shall be added to you. Why? Because you won't desire things that God doesn't want you to have. You will desire the things that he wants you to have. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble first seek the kingdom of god that is protocol that's something that you and i must do every morning don't worry about feeding your flesh go get fed from the throne seek ye the kingdom of god get connected first what happens when this happens look at when you are connected first Amen. Remember, seeking the kingdom of god protocol is a system of governing rules and his righteousness that's what he desires what, what are we looking for? What's pleasing him and what's his character? When we get connected to his presence and aligned with his word, one of the first things that begins to happen 
we get a reset in priorities. Does everybody get it? You may have plans for the next day, but you come out of prayer or even in prayer, God resets your priorities and says, look at what you wanted to do. I know what you wanted to do, but now this is what I want you to do today. So your priorities get reset. But you got to make contact first. Amen. Or you just be going about your business and their priorities are not, they're out of order. <laughs> so the, one of the first things every day, he's going to reset your priorities. So that the things of the kingdom are first. We're not first, he's first. His will is first. Amen. Go to Malachi chapter 3. So after we start protocol, what's the first thing that's released? We get reset priorities. Things happen. I come out of prayer, and the Lord says, okay, this is this, 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 and this. I'm like, okay. Now, sometimes if I don't hear any change, then there could be a reset in priorities during the day, or I maintain the same priorities. Malachi 3 and verse 16. Then those who feared the Lord, who reverence, honor, and respected him, spoke to one another, and the Lord did what? He listened. So, here, here's the key. Those who reverence, respect, and honor the Lord, those who carry the fear of the Lord, God hears. Does everybody get it? He hears. He listens. He's waiting. You know, he waits for me and you every day, every morning. He's saying, come, talk to me, because I want to talk to you. So it says here that those who feared the Lord, God spoke to, and he listened and heard them. In verse, and so a book of remembrance was written before him for those who feared the Lord and who meditated on his name. Verse 17. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, on the day that I make them my jewels. I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Then you shall again, what? Discern between the righteous and the wicked. And we have a big problem with that these days. We have a very big problem. Let me tell you, there's three types of citizens. Are you ready for this? There's the deceived, there's the wicked, and there's the righteous. Those are three types of citizens. The deceived, the wicked, and the righteous. That's all there is. What kind of three citizens are there? The deceived, the wicked, and the righteous. And he says, and I will spare them. As a man spares his own son who serves. In verse 18, look at this. Read it with me. Then you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked, between one who what? Serves God and one who does not serve God. So if a person doesn't serve God, who does he serve? The enemy. And if he serves himself, who is he serving? The enemy. Because you're either serving the Lord or you're serving the devil, one or the other. So he says, then you will be able to what? Discern. Why? Because you started off with protocol. Protocol. Seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added. Getting connected. James chapter 4. So God hears those that fear him. Glory. James chapter 4 and verse 7. Spiritual protocol, part 2. <laughs> Glory. Let's speak it in verse 7. Therefore, submit to God. Well, what do you think he means by that? Submit to God. What does it say? Seek ye the kingdom of God. Get into what? Protocol. 
Because if you don't submit to God, you can't resist the devil. It's impossible. The enemy will constantly deceive you. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. What does the Lord say? Draw near to God, and he'll draw near to you. That means get connected with his presence. Cleanse your hands. In other words, you sinners, repent. You can't get connected to his presence until you repent of your sins, washed by the blood, cleansed, because the blood always goes before the spirit. And purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will what? He will lift you up. Humble yourself. So submit to God. It's a protocol. Seek ye the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all things will be added. Submit to God. What? Okay, so after you started in the protocol, what else is there? You're waiting for a command. You're submitting to him. Cast your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Commit to you your works. Acknowledge him in all of your ways, and he's going to establish your thoughts and your steps. Draw near to his presence and get connected. Amen? Humbling yourself means you must deny yourself. Deny yourself. Let me share something vitally important. And, and, and I can't emphasize this enough. Without worship, you can't connect. You just can't connect. It's like filling the car with a quarter of a tank of gas and expecting it to go to full. <laughs> it ain't going to go. It's like filling a glass of water all the way. For me, I think it's like putting on a pair of glasses where you can see... <laughs> Because without being filled with the Holy Spirit, you can't see. And you cannot get filled with the Holy Spirit without worship. Without worship. You'll live a life of assumption. You'll live a life of false hope. You'll be waiting for Jesus, and Jesus will be waiting for you. 1 Peter chapter 5. First Peter chapter 5, 5. Submit to God, resist the devil. Submit to the protocol. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with what? Humility. Humility. God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Grace is God's plan of escape. It's not un unmerited favor, it's unmerited love. You earn God's favor. Amen? Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Again, be sober, which means alert. Be vigilant, which means consistent. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour or deceive. Resist him steadfast in the faith. Faith is associated with being connected with God's presence. Knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. So you're not the only one. Amen? You're not the only one. Submit. Humble. <laughs> Lean not on your own understanding. Cast your cares upon him. Stay alert. And consistent so you can discern. Does everybody get it? So you can discern. Let me share something with you. When, when we lack the connection, we lack discernment. It's, it's like a light bulb that's constantly collecting dust. Amen? Or it's like a battery that begins to wear out. You know, that ever-ready battery? You know? Is that what it is? The, the rabbit? You know, Arr! <laughs> done. <laughs> but that's why we got to stay connected. Staying connected to God's presence and staying aligned with his word. See, but the enemy comes in and tries to bring compromise, complacency, and laziness. Believe me, there's people I'd like to lasso and just throw into God's presence. <laughs> so 
Psalm 19. Remember, we're to discern those who serve God and those who don't serve God. Because there's a lot of wannabes, but there isn't a lot of willabies. Psalm 19, verse 12. Let's speak it together. Who can what? Understand his errors. Cleanse me from secret faults. Keep back your servant also from what? Presumptuous sins. That means stop assuming. Number one rule. Don't assume. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and I shall be innocent of great transgression. Don't lift your hands. All of us have assumed at some time and things got worse. And we said, but I thought. But I assumed. But it was incorrect. We don't want to assume. If you're at a place where you don't know what to do, don't do anything. Get aligned with the word or go get counsel. Do not assume anything. The process of protocol <clears throat> is to fill a position as a servant and a steward of the Lord's storehouse. You cannot be one who assumes to be a steward of God's storehouse. Amen? In John chapter 10. John chapter 10. So there is training, isn't there? Training for reigning. John chapter 10 and verse 26. So you're going to have to discern whether you're assuming or not. Amen? Amen? Because the decision you're about to make is going to either be an assumption or the truth. <laughs> oh, yes. John chapter 10. I've, I've talked to the Lord in that arena. Gosh, Lord, I think I'm assuming on this. I better wait on to find out what's up. What do you want me to do? I don't want to assume. Do you ever hear somebody say I'm stepping out in blind faith? That's got to be the stupidest thing anyone can do. That means they're blinded. <laughs> I'm stepping out in blind faith. <laughs> Stay away from that person. <laughs> blind faith means they're not connected. They're living a life of assumption. Does everybody get it? You know, the word also says faith comes by what? Hearing. Hello. Hearing the word of God. That means the voice of God also. So when God tells you to do something, you do it. Now you're walking in faith. And then you can take the blinder off. Because it's not blind faith. People come up to me. Yeah, I stepped on blind faith. Man, get away from me. There ain't no such thing as blind faith. It's assumption. John 10, verse 26. And you know what happens? You know why people step out on blind faith? Because they didn't go through protocol. Usually they step out on blind faith because they, they want something. And they're hoping God's going to meet them there or get it for them when they haven't heard anything yet. I'm going to go do this in blind faith. Why? Because I want it. Verse 26, Jesus said, but you do not believe because you are not my what? Sheep, as I said to you. My sheep do what? Hear my voice. And I know them and they follow me. See, because that's what the word believe means, follow. 
And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Now let me tell you something. People walk out of God's hand. This doctrine of once saved, always saved is ridiculous. You're going to serve the devil and expect to get, enter the pearly gates? Forget it. His throne room says justice and righteousness. There's a big sign in there. Enter by justice and righteousness. Not by your will. <laughs> Not by sin. Can't get in. So the sheep is a position of connection. That's why we are called sheep. Other than that, we're a goat. Because goats don't hear God's voice. Only sheep do. That means we depend on and follow the shepherd. So you're going to have to discern his voice. Let me tell you, every time something comes up, every voice from hell comes up too. Everyone's trying to mislead you. Genesis chapter 3. The world is, the secular world is totally misled. Because they're hearing from the wrong voice. They thought Adam and Steve was in the garden and it's Adam and Eve. In verse 9, and after they disobeyed God and partook with the enemy's plan, The Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? So Adam answered and said, I heard your voice in the garden. Because he couldn't see him, nowhere, he was blinded. And I was what? Afraid. Had Adam ever been afraid before? No, he didn't even know what it was. Because I was naked and I what? Hid myself. And the Lord said, Who what? Who told you that you were naked? That's why we have who told you that shirts. Why? Because the discerning what the voice. Who told you that? <laughs> who told you that you were naked? And shame came upon them. And they covered themselves with leaves. Now, they didn't cover their eyes with leaves. I want you to understand something. They covered their personal parts because they were ashamed because of what they'd done. And God said, that ain't going to work. And he designed his own clothing. So he took an animal, killed it, skinned it, and said, here, for the blood. And he wrapped them around with the skins of an animal. And they didn't cover their heads. They covered their personal parts because of what they had done. That's why they were ashamed. We won't get into that tonight. Oh, hallelujah. So we must discern the voice of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2. That is a protocol. We need this for discernment. Without protocol, there is no discernment. First Corinthians chapter two and verse nine. First Corinthians chapter two, verse nine, but as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who what? Love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the what? Spirit of God. Now, we receive not the spirit of the world, but the spirit is from God that we might know the things that have been 
freely given to us by God. Wow. These things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but what the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. That's called discernment. Discernment. So there's got to be the connection of God's presence through the Holy Spirit. When you are able to discern, you are able to see. When you are able to discern, you are able to hear. It's a discerning of seeing and a discerning of hearing. Why? Because in this place, we are able to see through the physical to, into the spiritual. And God speaks to us many times in visions or dreams. Every decision that you and I make has a result. Amen? Amen? Every decision that you and I make has a result. So we want to be able to see things through. So your decision, when you're in the spirit, you do your protocol, you're getting ready to make a decision. Before you make that decision, you can see the end result. Amen? Amen? When you see the end result, you know, you know whether it's pleasing God or displeasing God. How many of y'all know God knows the end result of me and you? Well, the greatest joy of a father is that his children see what he sees. Amen? Oh, Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. First Corinthians 15 and verse 20, uh, 33. First Corinthians 15, 33. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Do not be what? Do not be deceived. Without discernment, can you be deceived? <laughs> Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts what? Good habits. So you better be careful who you are associations with. You are to discern who you associate with. Does everybody get it? If you don't, you'll get messed up. Awake to righteousness, he says. And don't sin, for some do not have the knowledge of God. I speak this to their shame. So your associations will bring impartations. And you won't even know it because the unseen demonic forces are imparting you. You don't even realize when you go to places where you shouldn't be, you're going to get bit. You get bit. Those serpents or demons bit. And then they impart. Next thing you know, you're, you're doing fine. And all of a sudden, poof, you're struggling. It's overtaken. You become blinded. You begin to compromise. You become lazy. Consistent is out the window. Connection to God's presence is history. And you're fighting for your life. Your only thoughts are, what can I do to please me? Money, material, other things I won't get into. In other words, don't go there. Don't go there. Even when the enemy, if you can discern certain things that God, that God, the enemy is speaking to you or God is speaking to you, the enemy always tries to draw you into a conflict. That's why the word says depart from evil. Amen? Don't get sucked into something you got no part of. Somebody says something to you, your first part, your flesh wants to react. Amen? You wait. Holy Spirit will grab your flesh and you'll respond. That's if you're connected. People get into arguments and try and cast out demons out of one another. That ain't working. You got a demon. No, you got a demon. You both got demons. And they're both getting fed. Psalm 37. This is all about discerning, <clears throat> all about discernment. You won't discern these things if you don't do protocol. I'm 
Verse 26. Psalm 37, verse 26. <clears throat> Maybe. Okay. Let's just go right to 27. Depart from what? Evil and do good and dwell for what? Evermore. For the Lord loves justice and does not forsake his saints. They are preserved forever, but the descendants of the wicked shall be what? Cut off. The righteousness shall inherit the land and dwell in it for. Ever. In other words, depart from evil. Don't go there. Don't go there. The enemy tries to suck you in. Don't go there. Now, if you're doing the protocol, you're getting connected and aligned, the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. So you will automatically sense and discern that it's evil. It's displeasing to God. You'll depart from it. You won't even step into it. Why? Because the decision you're about to make, you're going to see the end result of it, and you know it's not right. Amen? Depart from evil fluence, associations, and things that are displeasing to God. You know, many people don't even realize they have accursed items. They don't realize tattoos are accursed items. Of course, you can break the curse off. After you, but don't go out and tattoo yourself. Don't have to prove somebody that you love Jesus by putting Jesus on your forehead or whatever. It's a moron. Hallelujah. But anyways, if you got tattoos, you break the curses off. Why? Because they're accursed items. Go to Joshua 7. Oh, happy day when Jesus won. Joshua 7. <clears throat> Is everybody there? In verse 10. Joshua 7 and verse 10. So the Lord said to Joshua, get up, why are you, uh, why are you thus laying on your face? And, and, and the Lord said, Israel has sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken some of the accursed things, and have both stolen and deceived. And they have also put it among their own stuff. How many of y'all know stolen goods is an accursed item? Amen? Amen? Stolen goods is an accursed item. How many of all marijuana signs and T-shirts that say uh, Joe's Grill and Bar and stuff like that to promote alcohol? Those are accursed items. How about skulls? It's amazing. It blows me away how many Christians walk around with skulls on them. I stop them. Are you a Christian? Yeah. Do you know that that skull means death? So you're promoting death. I remember years ago, a woman who brought one of her kids in to see me for counsel. This kid was jumping over all the place. Of course, he had a picture of a Tasmanian devil on his T-shirt. <laughs> I mean, like, what the heck? I was waiting in a courtroom out in the hallway one day, and these kids were, this one kid was all over the place. And I said, Lord, what's going on here? This kid's got demons. And he said, look at the game he's playing. It's Pokemon. People have no idea about accursed items in their house. In their homes, things they wear, and they wonder why they have problems. Look at this, verse 12. He said, therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their what? Enemies. They cannot stand before their enemies. But turn their backs before their enemies because they have become doomed to destruction. Neither will I be with you anymore unless you destroy the accursed from among you. How many of you know all paraphernalia is a cursed item? How about alcohol? Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Get up and sanctify the people and say, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow because thus says the Lord God of Israel, there is an accursed thing in your midst. Oh, Israel, you cannot stand before your enemy until you take away the accursed thing from among you. In the morning, therefore, you shall be brought according to 
to your tribes, and it shall be that the tribe which the Lord takes shall come according to the families, and the families which the Lord takes shall come by the households, and the household which the Lord takes shall come by man by man. Then it shall be that he who has taken the accursed thing shall be burned with fire, and he and all that he has, because he has transgressed the covenant of the Lord, and because he has done a disgraceful thing in Israel. The word says, don't tattoo yourself. What do you think people do the, today? Why does tattoo a cursed item? Because it draws blood. And most of the people, time people, it doesn't matter whether you put Jesus on or not, it's drawing blood. It's the same thing as cutting. Does everybody get this? It's the same thing as cutting. Remember the prophets of Baal when they cut themselves to try and get their uh, false deity to do something when he couldn't? And Elijah just laughed. He said, well, he must be on sleep or on vacation or something like that. And he called down fire and he said, and changed everything around and killed 400 of their prophets. See, people don't get, they don't get it. Why? Because protocol. No protocol. No discernment. I mean, we were at this event. It was, it was a, a, a Christian event. And they got a tattoo thing there. I'm like, what are you guys doing? Oh, we're tattooing. Well, yeah, they're, they're blessed tattoos. They ain't blessed tattoos. Motorcycle Christians at the churches, they're having events. These Skulls and naked things on their bikes. I'm like, this is not, you know what? No protocol. No connection, no discernment. They live like the world. Oh, glory. Ephesians 5. Is everybody okay? Yeah. Ephesians chapter 5. In verse 3. Ephesians 5 and verse 3. Is everybody there? Amen. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as fitting for saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, no covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the what? Sons of disobedience. Therefore do not be partakers with them. It's going to take some discernment, isn't it? Second Corinthians chapter 6. Second Corinthians chapter six and verse seventeen and eighteen. Oh yes. It says therefore means that you must cooperate. Or it says therefore. Come out from among them, be separate, says the Lord, and don't touch what is what? Unclean. And I'll receive you. I'll be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord. So come out from among them. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Hallelujah. Now this, in verse 1, 1 through 4, or 1 through 3. Now, the Spirit expressly says that in a later time, some will depart from the faith, which is the connection to God's presence, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. It's amazing. And how many individuals have started off correctly and then drifted. And it's because of the lack of the connection, lack of protocol. They drifted. Now they've become religious. You can't use any other Bible but the King James Version. 
Oh, and you can't skip from one scripture to the other. You have to read the whole chapter. I'm like, snap. I mean, talk about stupid. This is religious garbage. People drifted in. Incredible to me. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. Those individuals have gotten disconnected. Hallelujah. Second Peter chapter 2. Verse 1 through 3. We're coming in for a landing now. <laughs> Everybody, put your seats forward and remove your trays. <laughs> there will be no standing up to go to the bathroom now. <laughs> Hold it until we're done. <laughs> Second Peter chapter 2 verse 1 through 3 let's speak it together that's why you notice I've gone a little faster right now because we're coming into a close but there will be what also false prophets among the people even as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies even denying the Lord who brought them and bring on themselves a swift destruction. Many will follow the destructive ways because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed. By covetous, they will exploit you with deceptive words. For a long time, their judgment has not been idle and their destruction does not slumber. For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down into hell and deliver them to, into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment, and did not spare the ancient world, but saved Noah, one of eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them to destruction, making them example of those who afterward would live ungodly, and delivered righteous Lot, who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked. For the righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. Then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of the temptations to reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment. And especially those who walk according to the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise authority. They are what? Presumptuous self-will. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries, whereas angels who are greater than in power and might do not bring a reviling accusation against them before the Lord because God sees it. Amen? So we see false prophets and false teachers. I'm going to go to Psalm 119. Psalm 119 and verses 1 through 8. Praise God. Spiritual protocol. Discernment. Without protocol, no discernment. People become dull. When you lack the protocol, you begin to live out of the soul and not the spirit. Verses 1, blessed are the what? Undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with a whole heart. That's worship. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Why? Because they're connected. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statutes. Then I would not be ashamed when I look into all your commandments. I will praise you. I will what? Praise you with the upright of heart. When I learn your judgments, I will keep your statutes. Oh, do not forsake me utterly. Wow. The undefiled. You're going to stay undefiled if you can discern. If you can't discern, you'll become defiled. 
And I'm going to close at 1 John 5. Remember, there's three types of citizens. Deceived, wicked, and righteous. <clears throat> 1 John chapter 5 and verse 18. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 18. We know that whoever is born of God does not sin. But he who has been born of God keeps himself. In other words, he does not allow sin to overtake him. Amen? Doesn't mean you won't make a mistake, but you quickly get out of it. Why? Because you can discern. You may drop a hammer on your foot. And you may say something like, oh, God bless me. <laughs> you hope. But you may say something different. You just quickly repent and say, Lord, man, sorry. So we know whoever is born of God does not sin or allow sin to have dominion over him. But he who has been born of God keeps himself, and the wicked one does not touch him. Why? Because he's connected with God's presence. He's aligned with the word of God, and he is fulfilling protocol because he has discernment. Because the enemy is always setting traps up. We know that we are of God, and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory of God.